Today's video shall be about high contrast images, how we can use harsh light, highlights and shadows to our advantage when we have nothing but direct sunlight to work with. And I'm sure that you have uh, seen or heard or maybe experienced yourself that uh, harsh light is not very good for photography. That may be the case in some uh, types of photography, for example, portraiture or portrait photography. You don't want harsh light, but uh, in street photography or for street photography in particular, we can learn to use this to our advantage and still create some really cool images. This applies to other types of photography as well, not just street. So make sure you watch this entire video for the full effect and maybe you'll learn something and get some new creative ideas as well. That would be awesome. So let's talk about when and where we can get these images that I'm talking about, these high contrast images on sunny days. In the morning, you have to look out for long shadows. Let's say you have a street and you have signs on that street sticking out of the walls. You can get some cool effects of the, the street signs that cast a shadow on the wall. And then you add a human element, for example, and you have something that would look quite interesting, I think. You also have softer light in the mornings, so make sure to get that or use that to your advantage as well. I would also look between buildings where the sun shines between buildings. You can use the building behind, for example, as a, a, a dark background. So you can really emphasize your subject. If that's again, a human like this postman, that is, uh, I think is a really cool example. And that was taken in an early morning, walking from my girlfriend's place to uh, my own place. Like I said, always bring camera. You never know what shows up and that's very important, I think, to improve your photography. Always have that with you. Or use your phone if you don't have nothing else. All phones these days have great cameras. Right, so we are moving on from early morning to midday. That is, I think, the most challenging part of the day to take these high contrast images. Then I generally go inside somewhere, for example, the metro stations or a train station where they have huge open spaces. They normally also have overhead windows. And when you have overhead windows, those serves as I guess you can say soft boxes, so they soften the light a bit. So just hang around there and see what's there. You can get images like this. Also make sure to hang around the exits of the metro stations where you can get some silhouettes. That also goes for metro stops that are outside. Here in Oslo we have some fantastic uh, outside metro stops that I've been visiting. especially a stop called Sinsen. They have overhead windows there. They have colored glass in the overhead windows. It is a really cool structure. So there's a lot to play with around these types of spots. Okay, one more example when the sun is high in the sky or we are still in the midday when we have the harshest light is that you can look on the dark side of the building, that's the shadow side of buildings and try to use that as a background for, let's say another human element to add some interestingness to our images. In this case, I had the, uh, the light side of the building to the right in the image and then sandwiched between these light areas was this dark area and I used that as a background to get this image. And I think this is really, really cool. So also look for big open spaces so you can have a minimalistic look to your, your high contrast images. The Oslo Opera is fantastic for this. Huge open space in the middle of the day. There aren't that many people around either, especially now in the fall when the tourists are out and in the middle of the week, you can get some really, really interesting images in um, in spots like this. So think about what or where that might be in your area when you want to go out shoot images like this and it's in the middle of the day. 
we have gone from the middle of the day over to the afternoon and basically the same principles as in the morning applies. Look for the long shadows on street signs, people walking close to walls so you can get long cast shadows there, contrast between buildings. And also something to think about in the afternoon is try that spot in the morning one day and switch locations because one locations, one locations, one location will look entirely different in the afternoon than in the morning and vice versa. So you can basically have one spot to have to give three very different looks in the morning, the midday and the afternoon. So also make a mental note of that. Now that you have an idea on when and where you can get these types of images, here are some other tips for you. If you don't have a camera with you, shame on you. ABC, remember, always bring camera, but you can use your phone and take test images and see how the, the light and the shadows fall on that particular spot on that particular day and time. Yeah, start to look for interesting shadows and how the light is in your surroundings. I've taken some really interesting images uh, just outside my apartment building on a certain time of day and a certain time of year. Up north in Norway, the light changes a lot throughout the year and in the winter, it's mostly dark and in the summer, the sun never sets. Another good reason to take test images with your phone and store in an album called just that. I think this is perhaps my favorite type of photography nowadays. It's so cool to play with the shadows and highlights and the coolest high contrast images that I can take is with a human element that is completely anonymous. Let's take a look at this picture. It's uh, one I took when me and my girlfriend went to Italy in Naples and look at how my subject is quite close to me, but it's completely anonymous and the shadow, his shadow is cast on the wall behind there. This was when the sun was setting inside a metro station. I think it's called Garibaldi station. Metros or train stations are excellent as starting points for making high contrast images. Be there in the mornings or afternoons when the shadows are long and the light is slightly softer. I encourage you to go try this for yourself and you will soon find out that you can get some really interesting images with using this harsh light to your advantage. Before we sum it up, if you have come this far in the video, now is a great idea to subscribe to my channel and like this video. Believe it or not, it makes a huge difference and it's a great way to support what I do. That helps me make more and better content for you. And in this video, we have learned where and what to look for when we are out shooting our street photography in harsh light and how we can use this to our advantage instead of being limited by it. In the mornings, look for those long shadows and use the slightly softer light to your advantage. During the midday, I'd go inside buildings with overhead windows and take it from there. Also look for minimalistic opportunities by using the dark side of a building as a frame so you can emphasize a light subject walking past. And if you can add a natural frame like in this image, that's fantastic. By the way, if you haven't checked out my video about using natural frames, you should probably check that out as well. That also adds an la extra layer to your images and the more layers you have in an image, the more interesting your images will become. So think about that and go watch that video after this one. In the evenings, the same principles as in the morning supply. Use the soft light, the long shadows and Try to swap out the morning location with the afternoon location on the next sunny day and you will see that these locations give off completely different vibes and you can get some really interesting, totally different images on, yeah, on different times a day. That goes for, for midday as well. That is it for this video. My presets are for sale, by the way. Link in the description if you want to check them out. I've made, um, uh, nowadays I make presets from each location. Maybe I will make for different times of year, but I think that serves as a good base for my, for the, for the complete edit, I guess you can say. I don't think there is such a thing as a one click wonder when it comes to presets. You always have to fine tune and uh, make local adjustments on the final image. But my presets pack, presets, my preset packs are made in, in that, with that in mind, that you click on the preset to give it a certain look, so you have that look to work with, and you tweak it to your liking, and that's it. I think that's the best way to use presets. So, 
Another great way to support the channel, it's perhaps the most direct way to support the channel, is to get a pack of presets. And I would very much appreciate that. Right, until next time. Bye bye.